The earthquake and tsunami which hit Japan in March 2011 led to massive radioactive leaks. Six months later, it turned out that twice as much radiation was released than initial estimates said. But October 2012, operator TEPCO finally admitted it failed to implement safety improvements that led to the meltdown. Then a year ago, record radiation levels were found in local fish. It was revealed three months later that the cause was radioactive water leaking from a storage tank. Last August, TEPCO confessed that around 300 tons of highly radioactive water had leaked from Fukushima since 2011. Let's now talk to Christina Consolo, a researcher in the effects of nuclear incidents. Uh, Ms. Christina Consolo, welcome to RT. So what's currently being done at the power plant to clean up the contamination? How efficient is the cleanup process right now? Well, I think um, many of the things that they're doing at the Fukushima site are purely cosmetic to, um, to have the appearance that there is some kind of um, decommissioning going on. But the truth of the matter is, you know, we have three melted cores that are underneath the plant. We don't know where because we've never seen any kind of ground penetrating radar or other indications of where those fuel cores may be. Uh, we have 1,000 to 4,000 tons of water that moves through the site daily because of the underground river that used to be on the site. And then we have the massive amount of water that's being poured and collected in tanks, and those tanks are failing. And so at some point, a decision is going to need to be made about what they're going to do with the water in those tanks, because the goal is to keep the workers on the site for as long as possible so that they can try to mitigate any problems that occur from failures in all of their systems. Uh, so just to make it clear, how big a danger does Fukushima currently present? Well, there's a, a huge danger if the workers have to evacuate the site. And for the last few months, we've been hearing from anonymous workers that they're um, detecting areas as high as 10 sieverts, but that's because their Geiger counters only go up to 10 sieverts. And of course, at um, three or four sieverts, um, you know, you're, um, you're in a bad situation. And so the, the danger is that the workers uh, may not be able to continue being on site. And if that were to happen, um, the pouring would stop monitoring of the systems that they have in place now would stop mm. and then it would be um you know a, a slow slide into hell from that point on and how much time can it take before refugees can go back to their homes there i don't know that they can ever go back but um you know according to the japanese government they're trying to move people back into some of those areas because they've done decontamination, which um, people who have worked on the decon decontamination um, uh, process have stated, you know, that it hasn't worked. And we know just from bomb testing that even hydrochloric acid doesn't remove radiation. So um, I think that those are, um, um, you know, that that is uh, false information that's being perpetuated by the Japanese government in a way to um, try to assuage people's fears and they just keep getting the same rhetoric that everything's okay, okay. you know, that it's at a low level. All right, researcher Christina Gonzalo. Christina, thank you very much indeed for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.